In this example, let's compute, or I should say simplify, another difference quotient involving this time the function g of x equals the square root of x squared plus 9. How do you simplify a difference quotient that involves a square root of some kind? Well, let's look at our difference quotient right here. We have f of t minus f of 0 over t minus 0. So t is some variable um, that's, as the name suggests, is able to vary. And then 0 is some fixed number. How do we compute this difference quotient right here? Well, we have to compute f of t. What's f of t? Um, and I can see that there might be confusion, like what the heck is 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 f there? You might be like, oh, look that look at that butterfly in the corner. And when you're no no one's looking, you'll, you'll notice, oh, f of course was f of x equals the square root of x squared plus nine, wasn't it? G g of x, who's that? I have no idea. Um, so we want to compute the difference quotient of f of t minus f of zero over t minus zero. F of t just means replace all of the x values with t's. Um, and so we're going to get the square root of t squared plus 9. Then subtract from that f of 0. Um, f of 0 would be the square root of 9. Plug in x equals 0 there. And in the denominator, you're going to get t minus 0. Um, minusing 0 from anything will just give you back the other number. You get back a t. So we get the square root of t squared plus 9 minus the square root of 9 is a 3. So we get the following. And so we get this, which you might argue this is simplified, but like we've seen in previous difference quotients, in the previous setting, and, and the current setting as well, if the denominator is a t, that means t can't equal to zero. But when it comes to rates of change, I actually want t to equal zero. How do we get past that obstacle? And it turns out we have to simplify this thing algebraically. Now, we're gonna bring up all of these wonderful skills we learned in a previous math class, like say Math 1010. In this case, in order to simplify this difference quotient farther, we need to rationalize. Now in Math 1010, they typically rash, you typically learn to rationalize the denominator. We're gonna do something extremely, extremely counterculture right now. We are going to rationalize the numerator. This is unheard of. The hippies are running wild right now. We are going to rationalize the numerator. Now remember how you do that is when you look at your, you have the square root minus or plus a number, right? What you're going to do is you're just going to look at that number, that the sorry, the sign that separates the square root, and you're just going to switch it from a negative to a positive or a positive to negative, right? You're just going to, you're just going to be that person who just always says the opposite, right? You just have the argumentative, switch the negative to a positive. And so this is called the conjugate of that square root expression right there, the conjugate. You're going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. You get t squared plus 9 plus 3 right there. And so in the numerator, I want you to FOIL this thing out. You're going to FOIL out the, you get a square root times that times 3, 3 times that times that. Do all of the possibilities. You're going to get a square root of t squared plus 9 quantity squared. You're going to get a plus 3 times the square root of t squared plus 9. You're going to get a minus 3 times the square root of t squared plus 9. And then finally, you're going to get a minus 9. That's what you get in the numerator. Now, in the denominator, what do you get? You're going to get t times the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. That is, you're not going to multiply out the denominator. No multiply denominator. We've talked about this before. It's actually better for a fraction to keep the denominator factored. You're not doing yourself any favor by multiplying it out, so leave it factored. I'm giving you permission not to do that step, so don't do it, because it's not going to be it's not going to be effective use of your time. Well, why did we multiply out the numerator then? Well, there actually is going to be some benefit of doing that. Notice some simplifications that happen. For example, when you square the square root, these are inverse operations. They cancel out. So you end up with t squared plus 9. Um, some other things. You have a 3 square root of t squared plus 9. You have a negative 3 square root of t squared plus 9. Those things are opposite but equal. Uh, They're going to cancel out. They're gone. That's the reason why we multiply by the conjugate. When you multiply by the conjugate and you FOIL out, the outside and inside terms are going to cancel. And then the only other thing there is a minus 9. And then the denominator, which we have refused. We refused. We took a blood oath. Our brother, our, our, our brotherhood we belong to, our fraternity, our sorority has forbidden us to multiply out the denominator, and we will not let down our brothers or sisters here. So the numerator, though, we have a t squared plus 9 minus 9. The plus minus 9 cancel. I can do that. And you're left now with a t squared over t times the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. You'll notice now the numerator is only thing left is a multiple of t. So does the denominator. It has a multiple of t. Those multiples of t will cancel. 
And the simplified difference quotient will be t over the square root of t plus 9 plus 3. And so now let's consider, is this difference quotient better than what we started with? You'll notice that the denominator no longer has a multiple of t in it. If you were to plug in t equals 0, what's going to happen? <laughs> you get a 0 on top. You're going to end up with the square root of 9 plus 3 which ends up being zero over six, which is a zero. Notice that's not undefined, right? Um, when you started this game, you had a zero over zero. Zero over zero is not a number, it does not exist. But then because of simplification, we end up with a zero over six, which is a number, it's zero. So because we were able to algebraically simplify it, we actually could put a hole, or that is we could patch the hole that was in our average rate of change function. And that's what gives us the instantaneous rate of change. We simplify difference quotients so that we can set the denominator equal to zero. It's a beautiful process, very difficult, very challenging, but we do hard things. We learn algebra to do hard things. We go to college to do hard things. We don't run away from a challenge. We embrace it, we accept it, and we conquer it. That is what college is all about, overcoming difficult things, such as simplifying difference quotients, uh, it's a great thing, and we'll do another example in the next video. Take a look for that link right now.